All right. Hello, everyone, and thank you for your patience. Uh, welcome to this week's product school talk. Thank you so much to everyone for joining us today. Uh, we teach about product management, All right. coding, Hello, data, and blockchain at our 14 campuses worldwide. Uh, we have an awesome guest presenting today. I'd like to introduce Bethany Pagels Minor. Bethany is a senior product manager at Sprout, Sprout Social. So thank you so much, Bethany. Uh, I just wanted to say that our host has worked in technology roles within numerous multi-million to multi-billion dollar organizations. They currently work on a development team focusing on social media. Bethany is the executive vice chair of Howard Brown Health, the largest LGBTQ organization in the Midwest. Whenever possible, they attempt to combine technology with philanthropy to allow nonprofit organizations to operate efficiently in the current technological climate. Bethany is a native of Mississippi and still does not understand how it can get so cold in Chicago. So we're going to hear all about their experience in that very shortly. So Bethany, uh, would you like to let, let us know how you broke into product management? Yeah, so um, I always tell people, like many product managers, I accidentally became a product manager. Um, I actually started off, um, I graduated in 2008, and if many of us recall, 2008 was a very difficult time for the economy, the country, different companies. So I had this great consulting gig, and I was actually laid off uh, about two weeks after I started. And I was just like, well, what the heck am I going to do? And I ended up working for a tech startup, and the CTO of the tech startup was just like, Bethany, you always complain that we're not building the right things. Here's a couple books on product management. Read them this weekend. Let me know what you think. And I read them and I, I knew instantly that being a product manager was definitely what I wanted to do for the rest of my career. Amazing. Yes, thank you so much. So everyone, as Bethany is preparing to put her presentation uh, to share, you can throughout the conversation, throughout the webinar, just post any questions that you would like for Bethany. And I'll be going through and picking about one to three that we can have Bethany address at the end. So Bethany, when you're ready, feel free to share your screen and we'll go from there. Thank you so much for being here. Okay. It looks like you're gonna have to stop sharing your screen so then I can have permission to share my screen. So the presentation I'm going to give, um, I call it the many flavors of Agile, and it's what's the right one for your team. So it's what's the right flavor of Agile. So I actually came up with this presentation because I just got so frustrated with so many product managers talking about the different methodologies that they use for, for their teams or the companies we're using and being very frustrated by those processes. And as a result, a lot of engineers were saying, you know, I just hate all of that stuff. Like, I don't want to participate in it. I don't think it's useful. And I was just like, well, how can I kind of phrase these different things to make it a little easier uh, for folks to understand when they should use certain types of software development methodologies? So let's start off with what is Agile? So Agile actually came about, like, so there's been software development um, methodologies, thought processes since, you know, software first, you know, got invented, you know, in the 50s and 60s. Um, however, there were a bunch of really senior, really sophisticated software developers who met in 2001 in Utah. I like to, you know, I, I include this picture of the lodge on the right side because that's the example from every uh, lodge that was in Snowboard, Utah. And I just like to think that they were drinking cocoa and being super excited about coming up with the Agile Manifesto and the 12 principles that, you know, really compose the Agile Manifesto. But most importantly, I love the core values they came up with. So when I
Five Five Squad model is a newer one, Lean, Scrum, Kanban, Waterfall, Stream Programming, et cetera. So obviously there's this, what's just on this list. But for this presentation, I want to really focus on the most common examples that um, come up. And that's the Spotify Squad model, Lean, Scrum, Kanban, and Waterfall. Now, before I even get to the actual breakdown, I know a couple of people are going to say, well, Waterfall is not necessarily agile. But if you had to look at the principles of Waterfall, many of those principles still fall within the different processes that, the, the, that, that, um, that are part of the core values of Agile. So is Spotify Squad model, so is Lean. So those three, um, there will be some arguments of whether they really belong or where they don't belong. But like I said, my number one focus is thinking about what the actual goals were that the software developers put together, more so than what the actual names of the different processes are. So then let's get down to the breakdown. So again, I was thinking, how can I make this very simple? You know, what kind of terminology will make it very easy for people to understand um, how you can choose different types of methodologies? And so I thought of cake, you know, so it's cake is something that we all know about, we all love it, um, or some of us don't love it because it puts on pounds, but we all understand cake. So then let's go to Waterfall. Waterfall is the classic, you know, um, cake, you know, fruit cake that most of us really don't understand what the purpose of the fruit cake is. Uh, it has a little bit of everything in it. It's kind of doing too much um, and it can be a little overwhelming. But what I really want people to know is that it actually can be really good depending on which industry you're in. I think of heavily reg regulated industries like the insurance business or medical um, or financial. Um, Waterfall is actually a perfect example of a great match for those particular organizations. More, more so because of the pros, right? So waterfall, you're supposed to actually, you know, clearly come up with what outcomes are supposed to be delivered. You're supposed to really understand um, the entire team, whether it's design team, whether it's engineers, the stakeholders, everyone's supposed to exactly understand exactly what's supposed to come out of the process. And overall, it's less risk. Now, as individuals, though, when you're actually in a waterfall process, especially if you've ever worked in any other process, you're probably going to say, you know, I really hate it because it's slow or it's inflexible. Um, also, because you're talking to the customers before you start the work, sometimes it can be very, very difficult to, you know, ensure you have all the right requirements to really get customers to get started. Um, and so what happens is, is you might build the entire product, get to the very end, and because of information um, yourself or the customer learns, it actually may not fit exactly what the customer needed at the end. And so that also leads to the fact that it can't be tested. So sometimes waterfall, again, it can be great depending on which industry because of the regulations that, that really um, determine how that industry builds products. But it'd be very frustrating for an actual product manager or development team because you know so much of this process is very long and there's so little ability to make the proper changes as you learn new information. So the next up is Kanban. So Kanban is actually one of my favorites. Um, the reason for that is that Kanban, you can actually just add Kanban at any given time, um, regardless of what other processes your team may be, may be um, actually using. Um, and Kanban is tiramisu. Now, it's really funny. I, I talked to my QA, and you know, she helped me choose some of the cakes. And it turns out tiramisu actually means pick me up. And that's exactly what happens with Kanban. So one of the reasons I love Kanban is because it really allows you to quickly see how much work is in progress and what the most important work um, that should be done at a given time. So when I think about Kanban, um, I think it's great for highly self-organized mature teams. And the reason I say that is because you really have to have a team that understands what the most valuable thing is that should be being built. Um, and so sometimes as a product manager, you're not going to have, you're going to be in meetings, you're going to be in situations where you can't respond very quickly to your team to say, oh, pick up this next story versus this other story. So Kanban, because of the way it's organized, um, people know the, 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 the next story up is the most important story. But then secondly, if you have a very self-organized mature team, there won't ever be any confusion or risk that people will skip over the most important story um, and go to, let's say, a uh, easier story to do. So, you know, identify some more of the pros, you know, it really makes identifying um, upcoming problems easy. Um, the reason I say that is when I think about the times I've spent time 
um, doing planning for teams that primarily run Kanban, uh, usually I find that because you're, you need to really flesh out uh, those stories at the top of the, the Kanban board, uh, people will quickly tell you, oh, well, actually, I don't think this story can be done before this other story. You know, oh, actually, I, I forgot to mention that this other thing needs to happen. And because of that, uh, naturally, it usually helps understand exactly what, the prop, like, what potential pitfalls are going to come up, which as a product manager, I love that. Um, just because it makes it easier for me to work with my various stakeholders and really make sure that they understand exactly what um, pitfalls might happen. Also, I love the fact that there's very little investment. You do not have to, you know, go out and get some kind of fancy tool. You know, you don't have to go Jira. You don't get, have to get Trello. You could literally just go to your whiteboard with a couple sticky notes and say, these are the stories we're going to work on in this order. And you have Kanban. I actually implemented Kanban for uh, a non-technical team. I was working at a marketing company and the, the people team actually asked me for tips on how to do their work better and actually implemented Kanban with them, which I thought was you know, a great example of why Kanban is so successful because these are folks who had never operated under this process, but were able to quickly understand it and, and move forward. So one thing I can say about Kanban that could be a little difficult, because you're just working on whatever is the next priority, sometimes it can get kind of murky. And, and when I say murky, what I really mean is you see all these stories in progress, you actually see where they're going. But sometimes, let's say the next, the, the next most important story may not relate to the story that just got done, right? So in theory, you may be kind of going out of sync when it comes to actually delivering a full function. But again, I really like Kanban for when you know a team might be having difficulty with some other more complicated process, kind of making it simpler and, and going back to Kanban is a really good way to kind of reset the team and get them back to a place of you know, higher functionality. So then next up is Scrum. So I think most of us, uh, if you've ever worked on a product team or even if you've never worked on your own product team, but you've watched product teams at your company, you probably heard them heard of them saying something about Scrum or, Scrum or actually doing Scrum. And so that's why Scrum is chocolate cake. It's something that's really palatable for just about anyone, any software development team, no matter what type of sophistication or lack of sophistication they have. Generally, because they've been exposed to Scrum, or at least they've heard about Scrum, it's really straightforward to actually have people pick up the process and be pretty comfortable into it. I personally like Scrum because when you have mixed skill sets, it's actually really good that, that, that Scrum is so formalized. Um, so I think a great example is um, for some of the software teams I've worked on, I will have someone who might have 10 years of software experience and I have another person who is in their first year of software development experience. And so what happens is, is having all of these specific ceremonies. And so those ceremonies include, you know, daily stand, um, sprint planning, sprint grooming, you know, retros and knowing that those are going to happen consistently and, and spending a great deal of time actually making sure that those things happen mean that no matter what level of the talent that I'm working with, I actually have a very consistent uh, way to make sure that we are all in agreement about the type of work that we're doing. And that's one of the most important things, in my opinion, when it comes to managing kind of diverse talent teams is really coming to that, that point of really being able to have a working agreement of how we work, what we're working on and why we're working on it, um, because it's really gonna make things very simple. Now going to some of the other pros, uh, I love the fact that, you know, one, it's super adaptable. So if you get new requirements from a stakeholder or you get clarification on a requirement, it's really, really good to, to be able to quickly implement that in a sprint versus waiting until the end of a project. Um, it also is really, really great for fast moving projects. So, you know, it's something where, oh, we have this new thing that's coming out. We need to get it out in two weeks. I would use Scrum. Now the cons are obviously scope creep. Uh, it's, it's literally, when I think of Scrum, I think that's probably the most, the, the most negative aspect that could happen with Scrum. It's just the fact that scope creep can happen, um, especially because you're moving so fast that so you may have lack of documentation, you might have some velocity issues, um, and then it depends on your staffing. So one of the things about Scrum is technically to run proper Scrum, you're supposed to have a Scrum master, product owner, the development team, um, et cetera. And, and from my experience in my career, a lot of companies actually don't have the capacity to have scrum masters or agile coaches, especially not one-to-one -one for product teams. So a project manager kind of ends up doing a lot of those different roles. And to be truthful, it's kind of difficult to do both product management as well as also scrum master. So that's kind of my major con when it comes to scrum is, you know, the scope creep and the lack of staffing. 
Um, and then also, obviously, this is one of those where the ceremonies can be frustrating for certain team members, which is why I think with Scrum, you have to be super organized in order to really make it successful. Because if you're going into, you know, planning meetings, retro meetings without a specific purpose, you're going to end up, you know, frustrating your development team and other stakeholders who attend those meetings. So then next up, so this is Lean. Lean is my personal favorite, which is why it's Funfetti Cake. So I love Lean because it's great for highly skilled developers and teams with expert knowledge in a given field. And also because it really, really, really drives empowering the team. So I run a version of Lean with my current team. And the idea is really just that anyone on the team can help, can put their hand up and say, Bethany, this is the, I think this is the most important thing we need to work on over the next week or two weeks or three weeks or four weeks. And I said, you know, you are empowered to put that story in there. We're going to work on that story and we're going to figure out how to make that successful. The other reason I love it is because, you know, you're always striving for the MVP. So you're always trying to get to an MVP experience to get something out there to actually start learning immediately whether you're building the right thing. So some of the other processes that I've defined before, previously, um, true, like they're probably the MVP process um, within those, but none are probably going to be as specific as Lean. And Lean is great for that because, you know, I feel like you're constantly learning in Lean. And as a product manager, I think that's probably the most powerful thing that you can do is learn as quickly as possible. Now, on the flip side, you know, the pace can be really overwhelming for a team. Um, trying to get the MVP out there constantly can really, really drain the team. And so sometimes you really have to take a step back and actually just decide not, you know, to slow down the pace or do different types of projects to kind of give the team time to recover. Um, and also because you have a lot of different people participating and surfacing the right types of work to do, you know, requirements can get to be a little bit unclear um, and you can easily lose focus on the, the overall mission of the team. But again, I love Lean because I really believe that as, as a product manager, getting to the point where everyone in your team is empowered is probably the secret sauce that really makes the team very successful. Now, finally, we're getting to the Spotify squad model. So the Spotify squad model, first of all, is ice cream cake because you don't have to make decisions. Like, you don't have to decide which process um, um, each team runs. All you have to do is decide that each team within um, an organization has the ability to, um, you know, work on a mission and work on a mission in any way that they want. Um, so in order for this to really be good, you really need to have teams that have complete trust. Um, because a lot of this is going to, you're going to be moving very quickly. You're going to be trying different processes. Um, you know, even here at Sprout, I, my first team that I, I started working on, we actually ran, um, we ran a version of Scrum and then my new team, we run a version of Lean. Um, so you can actually run very different processes. Um, even when I work with other teams, there's one team I work with that primarily does Kanban. Um, so it actually is really interesting having so many different squads and having complete autonomy as a squad to you know, do whatever it takes to accomplish your mission. So I love it because it has less artifacts, you know, ceremonies and roles. It really embodies the spirit of agile. It creates greater team alignment. And then you have small and frequent releases. Now the cons are the cross squad coordination, right? Because you're gonna be working with people who are running completely different types of agile. Um, and because of that, like you really do have to come up with like, how do we go through and make sure that this is done properly? And then the one that I would say that, you know, any director of engineering or VP of engineering would say is like, who owns product wide changes? Like if something really needs to happen that is not specific to a squad, how do we surface that up to the, you know, overall company, the overall tribe, the engineering, you know, function to figure out exactly who's going to build that and who's going to own it moving forward. But again, I love it because, you know, when you get to a certain sophistication in terms of your, your organization, you just have to give people the freedom to kind of try different things. And Spotify Squad model really allows that. So some key takeaways. So Agile fits all different types of appetites. You know, any organization or team can run some flavor of Agile. You know, what you really need to look at is like the company and team maturity, team talent and team ties which they should all dictate which type of agile works best for you. You should experiment. If you're currently running Scrum, it's not working for you, try Lean. If you're currently running Lean, it's not working for you, try Kanban. Do whatever it takes to really make sure that your team is, is, following, um, is, is following something that they can really be successful in because the process should not inhibit the ability to do autonomy. And then waste ultimately is the enemy. Like we should not you know, ever be doing things that create more waste in our work. 
And I love this example. So this is a, this is an example that uh, Spotify actually put out when they came up with the Spotify squad model. And it's like, we're all just trying to get into that top right quadrant where we have high alignment as well as high autonomy. And when we get there, you know, it's, it just makes everything better when you're working on a product team. And finally, if you ever have, uh, like, obviously you guys, uh, we have about a minute or two to answer questions right now, but if you have questions later on, feel free to reach out to me on Twitter or LinkedIn and we can talk a little bit more. So back to you, Kylie. Yay, Bethany. So I have a question while we're waiting for other questions to trinkle in. What was your interest in, do you have a background in cakes? I know you talked a little bit about cakes in general. My mom is a big baker. And so I was just curious what sparked that and how did you kind of come back to that idea? What's so funny is my wife will tell you, I actually don't really like sweets. Um, I'm actually more of a pie person. So, but the thing about being a product manager, right, is like you have to find terminology that really works for the audience that you're going to be talking to. And so that's how I came up with cake is um, I was, I was talking to a lot of different people trying to come up with some reference that would make sense to people. And cakes was overwhelmingly the one that people thought really made sense. Absolutely. Yes. And so when you, if someone right now in the audience is either at a certain company now and they're wanting to be a product manager or someone is currently a product manager, what's like one of the main takeaways? I mean, I know there's different PMs for technology, for software, for uh, construction, you know, for every kind of uh, industry. So what do you think? I mean, you touched a lot on, on attitude, on autonomy, on, you know, really creating that agile I guess, persona, but what do you think is something that would be like a big chunk of gold for someone or a big uh, slice of pie or cake, you know, for them to take away? Uh, is it yeah. asking questions? Is it, you know, whatever you think? Yeah. Well, obviously, I think the number one thing for any product manager is really curiosity, So, first of all. And so that goes into even like when you're trying to choose processes, when you're trying to figure out what works best for people, like always just like seeking, you know, feedback, asking questions of people. I know I ask my team constantly, I'm like, does this work? Does this not work? Should we do a reset on how we're doing work? And the reason for that is not because I don't think we're doing it well enough is that I don't ever want to get stagnant because so much of the work can feel repetitive. And so you get into these cycles of not really kind of pushing the boundaries and really thinking more strategically about how you work. Um, so just asking a lot of questions, being curious and being willing to break things, um, I think is so important. Uh, and, and a lot of times you end up getting way better results from doing that. One of my friends once said, she goes, curiosity didn't kill the cat. It turned him into a panther. And I love that because it's like same thing. Like curiosity can almost sometimes lead you away from where you're trying to go sometimes because you're so strung out thinking of all the things. But like you said, just checking in so you don't become stagnant because so often when people are stagnant, uh, growth stops developing, right? So even if you can just keep the flow, keep the movement right? Then you're, yeah. then you're doing something. Yeah. Not that you need exactly. to change everything and, and lift up every rock and stone, but yeah, just to keep that fresh energy in the space, right? Yes. For hundred percent, for sure. That's amazing. Okay. Let me go. We had a lot of people joining us today. We had 120 people at one point. So thank you so much for everyone who joined us live today. And for everyone else that'll be joining us uh, in the link later on. Thank you again to Bethany. If there's anything else, one last tidbit. Uh, oh, I do have one more question for a mentor or something that you've had in your life. What was something that, um, whether it has to do with product management or not, but just a mentor in your life that made you believe that you can do it? Was there any kind of moment in your life that you had that where you had a mentor or have you kind of just been, you know, this lone wolf on the path? Because we have all yeah. kinds of. Yeah, so one of the things that I do is I talk to lots of people, whether it's just like women in business, whether it's product people in business, whether it's, you know, black folks in business, I love to just have a whole bunch of super awesome, amazing people around me so I can talk to. In fact, I had lunch with someone recently who is someone I, I very well respect and is very well respected in Chicago. And I was talking about the fact that I was a rookie and she looked over at me and she was like, first of all, if you ever call yourself a rookie again, I'm going to personally put you in the corner. But she was just like, just own it. Like, you know, you, you do it 
just do it. Don't worry about whether someone has more experience or doesn't have as much experience as you. Just do your, your, your best and you'll be amazing. <laughs> That's so true. Yeah. And it is like confidence is key, right? And just uh, convincing yourself you got it. And then that helps other people convince <laughs> them that you got it. Uh, exactly. So thank you so much again for joining us. I hope that we can convince you to do more online events in the future. Yes. And uh, it seems like everyone loved you. And I can't wait to get this link to you and to the rest of our people in the groups. Uh, thank you so much, everyone. Product School people, we love you. Uh, once again, we are located in 14 different locations around the world. We have campuses for eight-week programs, part-time, in-person, and online. So Go to the website for more information. And if you have any questions for Bethany, like she said, you can reach out to her on LinkedIn or Slack or different platforms for her. Now, don't bombard her. But if you do have questions, reach out. That's what people are here for, to guide us and help us and keep building our team along the path. We can't do it together. We need each other. So thank you so much and have a great day, everyone.